Hello everybody, a bit of a different video for you today. I was in my local GAK Audio, which is guitar and keyboard, Brighton, UK, and I saw these Aston microphones. These have only been around a couple of years, this company. It's relatively small, they only make three mics at the moment. But uh, I kind of fell in love with the design and uh, the, well, industrial design and almost indestructible build quality. So I decided, get my hands on one, open it up, do a video and show you the actual insides of this microphone. After looking at uh, lots of videos on YouTube about these Aston microphones, I had to get my hands on one. And I think the last video I watched was where somebody actually hit one with a metal bar. And I kind of thought any company that sort of allows that to happen to something like a microphone must be quite happy that the microphone is going to live up to getting bashed around because that happens more often than you think in recording studios. Who said the digital virus? Oh, I'm ever so sorry, I knocked it over again by accident. I just, I keep on doing that. It's either a metal bar or a baseball bat. There you go. You see what I mean? That proves my point. One thing I like about this is you can screw it directly onto the microphone stand because it's got the thread in the bottom and it also comes with an adapter for the different sizes of threads so no more of these and uh, no more of these although Ryko actually make one especially for this microphone on top of that you don't need these pop shields in your face either because the pop shield again is built into the microphone and believe it or not this is British no try the other one The only other microphone that I have got that's uh, British made is one of these old Reslo ribbon mics. Uh, this is from 1966. I mean, this is the one that the Beatles used. And uh, other than that, I don't know if there's any more British companies making microphones. Maybe there is. If you know of one, please put it in the description below. But, you know, I don't actually know. However, I'm going to do the little unboxing video here and open this up. Now, this is made from 84% recycled materials, but the whole thing is 100% recyclable, as if you're going to put this in a recycling bin. So you get a nice sticker, a nice metalized sticker, very nice. And uh, this is a metal pin badge. Yeah, I'll put that on my bag. And uh, let's see what else there is. A nice sort of destruction manual. Now this one is the origin on this picture. This is a slightly smaller version than this. This it, it just has uh, one pattern to it, that's all. Whereas uh, the one I've bought here, this is the spirit, and this has three patterns. It's got the figure of eight, the cardioid, and omnidirectional, which is uh, switchable. It's also got a minus 20 and minus 10 dB and it's got, uh, I think it's 80 base roll off as well. But uh, yeah, that is really nice. Immediately looking at that, you kind of think, uh, I like the way that they've done this metal work. This is stainless steel, this tube is. And what they do, instead of painting it, because paint scratches and comes off eventually and it just doesn't look very nice. What they've actually done here is they've uh, rolled this uh, for about four hours or something, tumbled it with, I'm not too sure what they've used uh, whilst they've been tumbling it, but it, it leaves this nice effect on the metal. So the only thing that's actually on there is laser engraved lettering and that's it. There's not, no paint. The only bit of paint is inside the badge there. So this is still gonna look great in 10 years time, even if you do hit it with a baseball bat, I guess. Not too sure about that. So uh, this, piece here is really really clever because that allows you to drop it occasionally and it actually flexes it bends you can maneuver it around so if you dent that and it looks a bit horrible doesn't it you can just sort of squeeze it back into shape uh, it's got a stainless steel knitted mesh in here the thing with that that a lot of people don't realise is that's not just there to protect the actual capsule inside. 
it's also to stop electromagnetic uh, waves and things because uh, if you put this down next to something say a guitar amplifier if you're close miking it to a guitar amp or something and you haven't got this sort of mesh on it will pick up electromagnetic radiation and that will travel down the lead as noise and hum and things so that is actually a faraday cage there so it's all part of the clever design now i want to have a look inside this and see exactly how it's built so i'm going to take this all apart Hang on a minute, this has got screws in it. I think I'll try the screws first. Yeah, it's just uh, Allen keys to open it up. Size two on the top. So I'll get this piece off. Now they do claim that you can actually wash this stainless steel part. So when a load of people have been using it and it starts to stink up a little bit because there's bits of food and God knows what in there, don't think it'll go rusty if it's stainless steel. I hope not. Because look, my poor uh, SM58s, look, they're starting to go rusty. Now the paint has come off, they're going rusty and there's not really a lot you, you can do about that apart from brushing it down and respray painting it. It's a shame because they're very, very good microphones. I do like these Shure SM58s. Very robust, you can throw them around. Oh, this is springing up as I'm unscrewing it. Am I having to hold the top down while I actually undo these screws. All right, let's take this up nice and carefully. Ooh, you beauty. Wow. That's nice. So what do we have here now? Oh, look at that. That's actually one piece. When I was uh, pulling at it earlier, sort of twisting it around, I thought it was like lots of sort of washers, single pieces that were all touching each other, but it, it isn't. It's actually one piece of metal. <laughs> Look at that. There's a couple of circular pieces of this sort of knitted mesh. It's kind of a randomly knitted mesh. And they go around this piece of material here. It looks like steel. It's probably steel as well, stainless steel. Like I say, you've got these two pieces that live around the outside there. Can I get that back on? But uh, I quite like this. It's like a slinky, isn't it? Slinky. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't make a very good slinky. However, this kind of reminds me of uh, that kind of, that flooring that you sometimes get on fire escapes and things. It's light. Uh, it's it's open and it's got a lot of strength this way, but it's got give this way as a spring. But this side, which is important, that is very strong and you cannot squeeze it at all. They must have a lot of faith in this to be able to give it three years guarantee. Let me do this as carefully as possible. I don't want to even touch the uh, unit on the end there. Ooh, pretty. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Yeah, lovely. So looking inside at the circuitry. Now, I did make a mistake earlier. I'm sure I said in the video that this was a gold sputtered capsule. I am incorrect. This is a gold evaporative capsule. And on top of that, if you notice, it's actually a dual capsule. It's got one on one side, one on the other side. Why? Well, figure of eight, etc. You need a dual capsule for that. So I'll move on to the circuit board here and uh, one thing that always confuses me when you see a new product is why are there spaces for components and yet the components aren't there. Two capacitors seem to be missing, a few resistors, there's a space for another transistor there and yet there's nothing there. And here you see this is issue number three. Well the reason for that is apparently what Aston did is they made a few variations of this. And then they, uh, with different capsules, they sent them out to do blind tests by a panel of some of the biggest names in British music recording and production. And then only when there was an overwhelming consensus put on one particular combination of capsule and circuitry did Aston go ahead and actually 
produce this microphone. That is a really good way of actually making a product. Send it out, get it tested, find the bugs and the flaws and settle on the best one. So this is why this particular microphone has been made because uh, some 30 or more people chose this design of capsule and circuitry. Now this little box here, that is a high-end transformer with balanced circuitry and things so it's all sort of high-end quality electronic components etc and that is why the thing sounds good. Saying sounds good, I've looked on YouTube at a few of the demonstrations on this and you know people really do try their best to do a good demonstration on YouTube for microphones but the only problem is by the time YouTube has processed it you can't fully hear exactly what that microphone sounds like because YouTube has to squash down the uh, audio bit rates and things obviously to make it all fit but uh, the best way to test this microphone is to actually hear it yourself now there's nothing actually on the back of it that's uh, a blank board there but uh, that gives it space in the future maybe you know they made another design with valves in there who knows but uh, I think that is engineered nicely I like that but that's my personal preference I mean at the end of the day you've got to hear one of these to realize how good this microphone actually is just this piece alone reminds me of a piece of scaffold pole I mean it's quite thick solid and uh, yeah I think this is going to last a long time as for the actual audio quality according to a lot of the other YouTube videos and things that's not what this YouTube video is about basically it's about having a look inside and uh, you know just seeing how the thing's constructed but uh, judging by the rest of the YouTube videos most people have given a very good rating on this and uh, the build quality alone if I could just give it a rating on the build quality I'd say yes if I made a microphone this is how I would like to make the microphone bear in mind Aston are not paying me to uh, to say how brilliant this thing is. This is my this is my genuine thoughts about this. It's really well constructed. It can be taken apart. You can exchange bits and pieces. I like this idea. I love this idea. I think it's a brilliant idea that it's uh, you know it's almost undamageable. I mean, if you really went to town on it, yes, you could damage it. But I bet you could buy these and replace them. Now, when it comes to this, this is one of my other favourite mics. I, I love Rode microphones, but at the end of the day, you can't change this. If I drop this and I bash this, I can't change it. It's all part of this uh, structure from there to there. You can't change it. It is a good mic, though. Uh, these things, they get dented, they're going rusty, but again, it's a very good microphone. So I'm not judging one microphone against another in this video. I just basically want to show you that uh, the ideas alone that's gone into putting this together is like, uh, well, I wish I was working for them. This is, you know, I couldn't have thought of these ideas. So I originally bought this microphone. Now this is the Rode K2. This is a valve mic and it's beautiful. I love it. It's very good. But the only problem is to use this just for bits of voiceover for YouTube means Having all this stuff on your desk, you've got to put the microphone in its uh, basket there and then you've got this big huge power supply here. Now this power supply also has the omnidirectional, the cardioid and the figure of eight polar pattern as well. But you've got that, that's got to be powered up, then the microphone onto this, so on and so forth. And the cable for it is a seven pin cable and I think it's about five meters long. And of course just having this on your desk to do the occasional bit of voiceover is uh, it's a bit over the top really so the point is this Aston microphone hopefully is going to be the little thing that I can just stick on the desk and do the voices so if you like that video please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if possible click the little bell and uh, more videos on the way soon thanks for watching bye bye